Welcome to the Travel Agent Podcast. I'm your host, Aileen Blanco. I interview successful industry professionals and share my personal journey to becoming a travel agent. The show is for aspiring travel agents and travel professionals at every level. My mission is to uncover the universal keys to thrive in this business. Join me as I take a closer look into the life of a travel agent. Hello, and welcome to the Travel Agent Podcast. Thank you for joining us. We have another great guest coming to the show, and I'd like to let him introduce himself. Hello, Lynn. Thanks for having me on. And uh, my name is Mari Smith from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, luxury travel advisor. I've been in the industry for a little over six years now, I believe. I I lose count sometimes, but (laughs) been in the industry now. um, Started off, you know, with the route as a host agency, and From the beginning, I kind of determined that I I wanted to eventually step out on my own and go independent, which I have done actually as of 2019. So I'm just here to to, to talk about my brand, my business and what I've been doing over the past uh, years to kind of kind of grow my brand. Sounds awesome. Well, we're not going to veer off course. We're going to start with how exactly did you get into this industry? That's a great question. Um, I, I, we used to travel a lot as I was growing up, but it was mostly road trips. But um, <clears throat> when, I, when I graduated from college, actually, um, I, I used to like to travel. And I, I started an online blog, actually, and it was in the sneaker industry. And this is a funny way I got into the travel industry itself. I pretty much wanted to save money on my personal travel. And, you know, I, I believed in that that myth that, you know, as a travel advisor, travel agent, then you, you, you know, that's the way to go just if you want to do it just to save money. But what I realized was there's an entire world, uh, you know, behind that that title of a travel advisor. And there's so many different moving pieces and segments of the industry. And um, I just kind of kind of got deep involved into it. And um, like I said, I started off with a host agency. And decided I want to, you know, go independent, start my own agency. Um, you know, when I first started as a travel advisor, I was really just, you know, I was running around blind. I did a lot of research and studying, but I didn't have a particular niche or market that I was actually targeting. So I took any business that came my way. Um, and what I eventually learned was that I needed to, to, you know, find something that really interested me and I was passionate about so I could really focus on that. And that was the easiest product or service to sell to my clients that I have now. So that's kind of how I kind of, you know, fell into the industry. That's a great story. And, and it's like so many others, you kind of try to just help everybody. You know, a lot of us wish you would have figured that out much sooner. But um, in that, what is something that you wish you would have known in the very beginning that could have pushed your brand um, further, quicker? You know, actually, um, there are a couple of things, actually. So so one was is going back to, you know, really focusing on a specific segment. Um, like I said, I, I, I was booking any and everything from Disney vacations to, you know, trips to Thailand. And, you know, you can make money that way, but you, you're working harder, not smarter. And I really, truly believe that if you're not passionate about something and you kind of plateau, there's no more room for growth. So what I did was I I, kind of took a step back and rebranded and decided that um, I wanted to just, and and it's hard, Lynn, because sometimes you have to say no to business, right? You know, we want to take all the business we can get to make income. But what I realized was just by taking a step back, focusing on a specific market and and saying no to clients sometimes actually helped grow my, my business much faster. So um, that's one thing I learned was just, you know, have a niche as far as a a market that I'm targeting. Uh, The second thing is automation. Um, You know, I I consider myself a techie. I I like a lot of different tools and resources to use. But I also realize that, you know, when I'm when I'm doing all these different tasks, it kind of takes away from me going in and being able to spend more time designing itineraries for clients. So I kind of learned to. To, to automate my business when you think about email blasts, newsletters, uh, with CRM, you know, contacting customers, things like that. Um, you know, different tools I can use that can do that work for me and kind of free up my time. 
I love it. I love automation. And I think, you know, it's true. The riches are in the niches. So let's expound on the automation. Um, do you mind telling me like some of the tools that you're using and how it's kind of changed your business? Yeah, definitely. So I use uh, tools like, um, you know, I, I think the number one, especially in our in our business, um, one thing that we always obtain from a client or even a potential client is their their contact information as far as email address, right? So by building the email database, even if you don't close that particular client, now you have to think about the fact that you can actually drip on them with a newsletter. Um, so I have a series of newsletters that I use to actually, you know, drip on my subscriber base um, and expose them to different content, especially during now, during these times with the pandemic, uh, you know, providing information that's, that's factual from an expert that they can use and make decisions as far as if they want to travel or if they don't, don't want to travel. I think that's very important. So, so newsletters, I, I, I can't stress enough. I mean, even the email list, as far as if you have a group traveling, you can use that to market to a specific group that you know likes a specific type of travel. So that's one thing I really, really harp on and I've done over the years um, is, is, is build an email database. So that way, you know, you can expose everyone. Um, even when people can't travel, they still want to see nice visuals and media, right, as far as travel. So, you know, that's one tool I think everyone, um, and not even just this industry, uh, professionals need to use some kind of email automation or email client. Um, you have MailChimp, you have Flowdesk, you have other services. So you definitely got to use those tools. So speaking of the newsletter, there's been enough time at this point, I feel like that people have kind of figured out what their pivot is going to be um, for COVID. And the newsletter is brilliant because you're able to inform uh, your potential clients and your current clients about what's going on post COVID. So what other things have you done during this time to kind of get you through to now? Yeah, def definitely. And, and I think uh, I'm glad you asked that question because actually the newsletter is one way I pivoted because what I, what I did was I created a new service. So some people, you know, want to travel now, but they're kind of afraid, they're skeptical, you have the vaccine, um, you know, they're scared or afraid of, of, of contracting the virus. And then you have people that want to get out and travel, and you have people that are planning to travel for the future. So what I did, Lynn, was I, I created a service um, called Book My Bucket List. And what I did was I created my own bucket list of properties that I personally wanted to travel to or I have traveled to or that my clients have actually visited. And these are top notch, you know, not top notch, but these are properties that, that are in line with, you know, the values of my particular brand. So, you know, eco luxury, um, they, they, they involve the community and they're giving back some kind of way. So what I do is I actually send out this newsletter with these different properties and highlight them over a certain period of time to kind of expose them and uh, raise awareness too, as far as environmental issues to my clients. So that's one way I've actually pivoted is to use my newsletter and my email database to kind of expose my, my, my client base to a new, our potential clients to a new service. And so at what point did you realize that that was going to be helpful? Because um, what I've heard over and over is that, you know, we had a whole lot of time to kind of think about what it is we can do to help get back, uh, you know, get back into the groove of things for the travel industry. But what, what did you poll your audience? Were you working with other travel advisors? Um, how did you decide to, to pivot this way? Um, you know what? It's, it's, I don't want to say it was forced, but when the pandemic first started, um, you know, our industry pretty much got hit during wave season last year, which was, you know, one of the busiest booking seasons. So to come out of wave season and not have the momentum that you're expecting, um, you know, I, I knew there were different streams I had to try to open up to kind of sustain um, until travel picked back up. And we know, we still don't know oh, exactly when travel is going to kind of get back to where it was, you know, it will eventually. Um, but I, I, I kind of noticed earlier that I needed to, to do something. So I, I started brainstorming and these were kind of ideas I was thinking about. It just, I mean, the pandemic just kind of sped everything up for everyone. I think, you know, you even look at the implementation of, of technology and travel right now and, and the way things have changed as far as, you know, 
as many um, contactless points as possible at a hotel. So I think we all kind of had to pivot throughout the industry in some form or fashion. So I want to ask you, because you, you definitely have a really cool niche. And I find it's really difficult for people to, to niche down. And it, it just seems scary for some reason, because the less amount of people that you're contacting, it seems like you're going to you know, make less money, which we all know isn't necessarily the truth. So how did you decide to kind of niche all the way down and, and stick to it um, and really attract your ideal audience? Um, well, I, I kind of decided it was, it was kind of a, a conscious decision. I started even in my own personal travels, I started to notice and uh, different things as far as, you know, like sargasm and different things in the environment that, were, that are kind of kind of changing. And that coupled with the pandemic, um, I really see a shift as far as the way people travel, actually, because people are looking more for socially distanced experiences. So and a lot of the properties that I actually work with or focus on are those type of properties that, like I said, are, are um, you know, conscious as far as the environment, their impact on the environment, their impact on the local culture. Um, when you think about jobs and, and whatnot, those are the type of brands that I kind of uh, align with um, throughout this period with, with the pandemic. Awesome. So tell me one awesome thing that is going on in your personal life that you'd like to share and one um, thing that you were looking forward to uh, coming up in your business. Okay. Yeah. So one thing in my personal life that I've, that I've actually, um, even over the, even a little prior to COVID really is my commitment more to my health, my personal health, um, anything from even my diet to exercise. I was always big into exercise, um, but, you know, committing more as far as my actual diet and the things I eat, the food that I intake and how it actually uh, affects my body. As far as business, you know, one of one of the things I'm proud of is, is a couple of projects I've been actually involved with over the past year. Um, one is a project with TripAdvisor as far as their new record platform. So what they did was they 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 chose out of a, I think roughly two to three hundred travel advisors and DMCs, uh, destination management companies from across the globe, and kind of created the system to where they use their existing subscriber base and they match people with an advisor based off, you know, their search preferences, what they're looking for. Um, and we actually partner with that, that cu customer and go through the whole design process. So that's pretty been a pretty cool project as, as far as my business. And I kind of uh, dove into over the past year as well. That sounds really cool. Do you mind like giving us a little bit inf more information about how you were chosen? Yeah, actually um, the team reached out to me. Uh, I want to say it was, um, 2019 you know so this is this is before the pandemic before COVID um, and you know we went through a couple of calls and you know decided it was a good fit and I was just really excited to be involved in the project they actually reached out to me via via social media um, they saw some of the content that I was actually actually posting so that's how they actually initially reached out to me uh, the project just launched um, the official press release was in December um, it's still in kind of beta testing as far as, you know, you'll see a lot of changes as far as enhancements with the profiles for the advisors, um, the social media content. So everybody can go over to at Hello Reco on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook to actually follow uh, the platform as well. The website is HelloReco.com. Um, and you can go in and check out. So what they did was, Lynn, it's, it's pretty interesting because the number one destination that people are searching for right now is Mexico. And what they, they, they chose Mexico specialists out of the group. And I was chosen as one of the Mexico specialists. So now anyone that actually searches for Mexico as far as a hotel or to plan a trip, now they, they can market the service to those people and kind of help them go through the design phase. Because I know one thing I always do is, and my clients do this too, is, you know, you go and check reviews of, of, of places, you know, experiences, hotels, destinations, and you want to see the raw and uncut as far as what people, you know, other people experience. Now, you do have to be careful because, you you know, some people say that some of the reviews aren't real or whatnot, 
But, you know, TripAdvisor is a good source to actually go to to kind of find out, you know, how other people rate properties and hotels and whatnot. Well, congratulations. That sounds really, really awesome. And I would love to follow up, uh, do a follow up podcast to, to learn more of how uh, that's going and, and what um, you were able to create um, post COVID, like after all of this mess is over. Just so you know, his information will all be on the travelagentpodcast.com backslash blog. If you would like to look up that information, I just want to thank you for taking the time to come on the show. Um, and also, Tapsters, his content's great. So look at the Instagram. Like, I really like your your content is just really amazing. Thank um, you. Because <laughs> um, one of the things I've noticed also is that, you know, um, a lot of us travel agents and advisors aren't great content creators. And we are trying to be better. And yours is definitely one that I really enjoy coming across on regular. So oh, yeah. good job on that too. Thank you. <laughs> but thank you. I really want to thank you for coming on the show and I uh, look forward to following your journey and possibly having you back if you if you have the time. Definitely, Lynn. And I, I truly appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate what you're doing for um, the community as far as uh, travel advisors or well, the travel travel industry in general. And I, I'm, I'm definitely open to coming back, you know, and talking more about, you know, what I've done and what I've experienced as far as, you know, working in the industry, especially, you know, post post COVID. Thank you for joining the travel agent podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, rate and review. Visit the travel agent podcast.com for more information about today's episode and other travel agent resources. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes until next time, continue to build a travel business you love.